I just run run through some of the right. some of the cro cover cropping and some of the different species and, and different things that have that have basically been used around the place and and what uh, what the what the benefits are for them. Um, so I'll just give you a little bit of history about uh, Union Forage. Um, Union Forage is a company that was formed uh, two years ago, and we're uh, we're working closely with with Berenberg, um which is which is really good. So Berenberg's doing a lot of the perennial species stuff, um, as Justin was just talking about. Um, lots of research and lots of development there, which is which is really exciting, and, and it's good to be working alongside uh, uh, companies like that, being being innovative um, and good research programs. Um, and then the other company we're working with is PGG Seeds, which is a company out of New Zealand, um, and we do a lot of the a lot of the annual cropping stuff, the forage brassicas and, and forage species and, and cover cropping species uh, is what those guys are specialising in um, and have been using for uh, quite a number of years down in New Zealand for for predominantly grazing uh, grazing species. Um, so I'll just go through the through brassicas. So you know, there's a lot of talk about about brassicas. Um, just to uh, sort of let, let you know kind of what they are, I guess. Um, so some of the products that Union Forage has got is uh, Goliath Great, Winfred Great, Hunter Forage Turnip, um, other types of turnip, um, radishes, uh, kale, and and there's canola as well. Um, so we don't we don't actually have canola in our blend, but canola is a brassica. Um, so I put that in there just to, um, you know, a lot of guys are familiar, I guess, with canola that's been grown in Canada for, for a number of years. Um, but basically, canola has been grown for its, its seed production. Um, so, whereas the forage varieties have been grown for, for, for the completely opposite, I guess, but more foraging, less seed production. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of the brassicas that we use are biannual brassicas, so they need to be grown down in, in places like Oregon or New Zealand to, uh, to get the seed production. So they don't go into seed production here um, unless they're an annual variety. So that's really good from a, from a grazing point of view and, and from a growing biomass point of view to, to get you know, more, more biomass and, and more nutrient cycling going back into the soil. Um, so, so those, I guess, are, those are some of the differences and, and those are some of the species. Um, so why use brassicas and annual cover crops in a mix? Um, so like I explained before, you know, what, what we're using them for and, and our initial reason for incorporating them was to fill a feed deficit at, at any known time of the year, which for us was that autumn period and then now moving on into the winter period as well. Um, so, so with that, we've been able to increase production and pounds per acre. Um, to diversify a specific crop rotation, um, so you know, bringing in these different species to, to help out with the, you know, if you've got a tight rotation, something else that can go in there just to help extend that and, and also add to the soil. Um, building organic matter and adding nutrients to the soil. Um, building and repairing soil. Um, high yielding and good quality production too, if, if you're using the right species. Um, the ability to handle cool climates with, with a lot of the brassicas that we've got and, and the cool season grasses that we're using. Um, fast growing and make the most of the limited growing days as well. So we're able to you know, capture, the, capture the sunlight that we've got here. Um, also, you know, we're about 20% faster, faster growth rates than these, on these crops and what we're getting in New Zealand. So you know, that's just showing the sunlight. <laughs> Especially out in Western Canada, um, Saskatchewan and Alberta, we can uh, really grow these crops a lot, uh, a lot faster and get really good yields off them in a shorter period of time. Uh, frost tolerance as well for the cool season varieties. Um, so get them seeded, seeded after the frost. You don't want to frost when they're, when they're young and, and, and mature, especially on the brassicas, but they'll handle the frost later in the season. So we've got plants that are growing into the middle of November, um, which is quite significant for us. You know, if we were growing corn or something in our area, you know, that would have been gone six or eight weeks earlier. It would have stopped growing, whereas these varieties keep growing. And also into the, it's not the necessarily the air temperature that, that slows them down, it's the, it's the soil temperature that's got to get down. So a frost won't, frost won't kill them and, and they stay green as well once they have stopped growing. Um, so, you know, integrating livestock, I guess, is, is where you're going to get the benefits out of all this. Um, you know, if you're just growing a cover crop for the soil benefits, well, if you can incorporate livestock into that as well, you, you're going to be so much better ahead. Um, there's some good research done out of the Manitoba University um, 
comparing a, a, a cover crop that was just ploughed down as opposed to a cover crop that was grazed and, and there was net benefit just for the soil side of things in the one that was grazed. Um, and if you get good um, varieties that have got good regrowth, you're going to grow more biomass. Um, you know, as a plant gets more mature, the growth rates are going to slow down, but if you can graze it, it's going to get bigger as regrowth, so your biomass is going to be so much more um, so much more prolific than, than, for instance, if you were just ploughing it down for the soil health. So, um, so, so quite important, so that's what we're doing a lot of on, on our place. Um, here's, uh, <coughs> here's one, one variety, uh, this is a PGG variety, uh, Hunter Leafy Turnip. Um, Barenberg's also got a, uh, a Leafy Turnip as well, the, uh, the T Raptor, um, both are very good. Um, and so this has been bred for its, for its foraging production, not necessarily the bulb production, although they will produce bulb later in the season. Um, but fast, fast, uh, fast growth from seeding, so we're about 40 days to, uh, to when you can graze it, uh, one, of these, one of these varieties. Um, and then you know, if you're rotationally grazing, you'll be back around on that in about you know, three to four weeks, depending on the weather and, and you know, three to four or more grazings in, in the right season. Um, so that's uh, that's really good. You know, these are used a lot in New Zealand for uh, for finishing lambs um, and, and also cattle as well. Um, so turnip, so green globe turnip is uh, is one variety. Um, so these are a hundred day hundred day growing. So you can grow a lot of biomass there too. Um, these are going to be a single graze. Um, if you're grazing turnips with cattle. Um, if the bulb gets damaged, um, that, that'll kill the it'll kill the turnip and it'll start breaking down. Um, but uh, if you graze the tops, it's fine. But it's quite often hard to uh, hard to stop them stepping on too many of the bulbs if you've got too many in the mix. Um, but we've been getting really good production out of uh, out of the green glove turnips and using you know seeding them in the spring and, and using them as a as an autumn feed wedge. Now. Um, the Barkhand turnip, which is a, a Barenberg turnip, um, you know, these are a lot faster, they're, they're a tankard shape, they grow um, more up out of the ground. If you can see on there, you've got about two thirds of the bulb above the ground and then one third in, so it's been bred for its foraging, uh, foraging abilities, I guess, and its shorter growing days too, so 60 days, to, uh, <coughs> 60 days from sowing to, to grazing. Um, the Graza radish is, has been bred for foraging abilities and, and multi multi graze too. Um, unlike the turnips, this one can be uh, a multi graze variety um, and, and equally good for uh, for the soil health as well. Um, so there's a few mixes. This is one mix that, that Union Forage uses. It's actually been working really good. Um, it's got the, uh, the you know warm season and cool season grasses in it. It's got your three brassicas, Winfred, Hunter, and your Graza. Um, it's got hairy vetch. It's got Italian ryegrass, which is the green spirit Italian ryegrass that Barenberg's got. Um, we put some sorghum in there, a warm season, and, and also some crimson clover. So we want to get as many legumes in these mixes as we can to, like I was saying before, I guess, to make the most of that nitrogen that's in the atmosphere, get as much of that into the ground. Um, so that we can actually utilise it uh, going forward. Um, so you know, a mix like this, we might put some peas or something in with it too, just to just to add another legume. Uh, forage peas work really good, um, and uh, they work good in, in competition too. Um, so the relay mix. Um, this is this is a typical mix that we'll actually seed with our silage uh, crop as well. Um, and, and really targeting that regrowth. So that mix before, um, the ultimate mix that I was talking about, really good one for um, really good one for grazing and, and multi-grazing, so get it in and you'll be grazing it in about 40 to 60 days um, and a three to four week rotation on it. Um, can be silaged as well, but if it's silage, typically really good protein and good feed values, um, but it can be quite a lot wetter, um, so it can take two or three days to dry it down and, and you don't want to do the, a really huge swath. Um, but if you let it dry down enough, it, it makes really good feed. Um, so the, the relay mix is, is a good one. It's got a little bit more of the uh, Italian ryegrass, um, so it dries down a little bit faster. Um, the legume, uh, the, the brassicas in there are a little bit lower. The brassicas are, uh, can be really high moisture, so it takes a little bit to get them, to get them dried down if you'd stop piling that feed. Um, so another mix, this is one that we use, uh, use out west for, for swath grazing. Now it's not, does not just a swath grazing mix. Um, a lot of guys will put in cereal crops and they use them for their swath grazing. 
Um, this mix here is just an additive to go with the to go with the cereal. So it's got your, your Goliath grape, which which can grow up to about here. Um, then it's got the Hunter, which which grows up to probably about two feet, and, and then it's got the turnip in there too, um, which is sort of your, your base layer. So looking at the different layers of um, the, the different layers of uh, of feed there. Um, and then this is a what we call the root root master mix. So this mix is ideally suited for um, seeding after a crop. Um, so you might harvest a crop, you want to get something in, get something regrowing. Um, so this has got the different, basically the different layers. It's got the diacon radish in there, um, which is similar to, to the tillage radish, if you've heard of that. Um, that is an annual, so we typically don't seed that in the spring. We actually seed it in the, in the sort of past the middle of the year um, and to really get that root development going down. Um, and then we've got the uh, Barsika rape, uh, the T raptor leafy turnip, and the Barkan turnip, which are, which are three of Barenberg's uh, varieties, um, and, uh, and they work really good. So they're some of the shorter growing varieties um, for that later part of the season to get some production, seed it after the crop, and, uh, and yeah, go, go from there. So really good to have something growing in the ground and, and the added benefit of, uh, of some, you know, some forage production out of it too. Um, so I'll just run through some of the feed tests and that that we've got from uh, from our place. Um, this was uh, this was last autumn. It's not that it's not that easy to see. I might have to just sit up here so I can relay them out to you. Um, but this has got uh, this is this is just some some standard oats, I guess. So I'll just run through some of the key points. So crude protein is at, is at thirteen, um, TDN fifty nine, and relative feed value of ninety eight. Um, some spring triticale, so crude protein 13.9, uh, TDN 59, relative feed value 119. Um, so that's pretty. That's probably pretty typical of what we would of what we would expect for some of those cereals at, at that time. Um, so you know, not not outstanding, but you know, nothing nothing wrong with them as well. Um, but we'll just move into some of our some of our other ones. So this is a Goliath. Um, you know, we're we're now up into the crude protein 23.6. I've uh, got TDN of, of 68 and a relative feed value of 297. Um, the Hunter, um, the Leafy Turner, so crude protein 18, TDN 70, uh, relative feed value 425. And the Green Globe, uh, the Turnip, um, crude protein 22.9, uh, TDN 67. Um, and, and here's some of our alfalfa. Um, Crude protein 32, uh, TDN 65, relative feed value 209. Um, you know, so so that's the time when we're feeding that out that we're going to be looking to looking to supplement with uh, you know with with some straw or, or some some hay or something else, or we want to mix mix stand with some with some grasses in there to help uh, help get the most out of that. Um, here's some uh, Italian ryegrass, 14.8 um, uh, crude protein, TDN 71. Relative feed value 159. Uh, hairy vetch, uh, crude protein 25.7, uh, TDN 60. Relative feed value 130. Um, and here's a cocktail blend that we've got. Um, this is one of our swath grazing or, or autumn grazing blends. So crude protein 25.9, uh, TDN 69, and relative feed value 367. Um, some sweet clover 24.9. Uh, 63 TDN and relative feed value 176. Um, and here's some chicory. So this is we've just started using uh, chicory in the in the blends. We're just waiting to see how their you know their winter um, you know winter survivability. Um, these are used a lot in the dairy systems in New Zealand and getting really good production out of them. Um, crude protein 27, uh, TDN 64 and relative feed value of 192. Um, and tonic plantain is another one. So these these are both been growing, um, you know, for uh, for forage production. There is native uh, chicories and plantains out there as as well. Um, so we're hoping we can get good survivability out of these ones here too. Um, so crude protein, nineteen point eight, uh, TDN sixty nine, and relative feed value three hundred forty eight. Um, so that's what we're you know those those are the kind of you know the numbers, I guess, or, or you know the, the quality that we're looking for um, in our um, 
in our in our species and our mixes, you know, it's it's a lot easier for us to uh, grow quality, I guess, and 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 water it down if, if we have to with with lower quality forages to get the balance right. Um, but you know, it's it's a lot harder to try and bring in that quality. Um, so we want to be able to grow as much of that on our farm, and then and then equally with the you know getting the the soil benefits out of growing these diverse crops as well, nutrient cycling and, and all that stuff, so that we can actually be building up our soils um, at the same time is, is really is really important. Um, so uh, some of the seed coating that, that we're using, um, legumes are, are inoculated with a rhizobium for, for better end fixation. Um, there's a moisture absorbent a starter fit package on there as well. Um, and we're actually coating with a mycorrhizal fungi, um, which is uh, which is actually an important fungi, which is actually in the soil anyway. Um, but we want to add more of that to it. Um, it actually fixes to uh, to the to the roots of plants. It doesn't adhere to, to brassicas, but a lot of the grasses, um, the mycorrhizal fungi will attack uh, attach to them, and and it actually helps extract other nutrients and stuff out of the soil. So. Um, an important part of, uh, of, of the blend of the, uh, of the coating that we've got in there. Um, so on our perennial blends, we're working with the guys at, at Berenberg, um, getting some new, you know, some, some new species and some new blends out that are working, uh, been working good. Um, so we've got the Graze Master, um, the Midway Mix, Barricade Mix, um, and Graze Master HQ. And a Nitro Master mix, which has got our um, which has got our, our legumes and stuff in there, sandpoint, sisal, and, and alfalfa. Um, so some of the some of the blends that we've uh, you know that are available that, that we're using, um, and then the annual annual species as well, um, millets, um, sorghum, teff grass, um, cool season grasses, the uh, Italian ryegrass, and the and the Crusader is another Italian ryegrass, uh, PTG one, and and then the legumes, Persian clover, Bassine clover, uh, crimson, and, and forage peas. So some of the some of the varieties that, that we're using, um, but it just you know on the cover cropping side, I guess it just depends what your depends what your goal is and what you want to get out of it as to you know which which mixes and what species are going to work best for you in uh, in your system. Um, so you know our the uh, brassicas that we use being the biannual, we get really good forage production out of them. Um, and then the grasses too that, that are being developed, some of the new grasses with lower, um, you know, lower heading out. So the, the, the Italian rye grasses won't head out here in, in, our, in our season, at least they don't in, in Alberta. They may here, but um, in Alberta they don't. So different from an annual, um, an annual rye grass is, is going to head out straight away. Um, so we want, that, we want that delayed heading so we can keep that forage production for, for longer in the season. Um, and then, and then, yeah, there's a there's a website there with with Union Forage. So um, if anyone's interested in anything, but that's what we've got going on. That website there too, we've got a lot of there's a lot of information on, on cover cropping and different links to different things, which are um, which are you know been uh, been a, been a good resource. So yeah, thanks very much. Yep. Um, we're not we're not using a lot of corn. Um, we don't actually. We're not you know with the Union Forage mixes. We're not using any corn. We used to grow corn. This is actually the first winter that we we aren't growing corn on our on our place. Um, we feel we're getting better production and, and the soil benefits out of the out of the diverse mixes and, and the you know the, the costs that we were spending on our corn. We weren't getting them you know. The, uh, the amount back, so, so that's for us. I know this year, especially out in Alberta and, and Saskatchewan, was a really good corn year. There was some really good corn crops. I'm not sure what it was like here. There is some, you know, there's some other things that you can add to the add to the corn too to make them more diverse. We've got a few guys that are doing that. Um, you know, some turnips and some hairy vetch. Some guys are seeding that at the same time as their corn. Other guys, you know, just let their corn get up and get a bit of a head start, and then broadcasting some seed. Um, in there as well to, to add to it. So you know there are there are other things that you can do as well. Yeah. Yep. You know of any species that are more tolerant to trampling under wet conditions that will bounce back or something that you should stay away from? Um, yeah, not not really something you'd 
stay away from. I mean, yeah, I guess it depends how weird it is. I'm just trying to compare it to more on the New Zealand style system with the with the grazing and wheat grazing, and especially on the brassicas. We did a lot of monocropping of the brassicas in New Zealand as opposed to the cocktail mixes. Um, and you know, a lot of the, the kales and, and the rakes which stand up reasonably tall, um, you know, as long as you don't graze them down right to the right to the dirt, yeah. have, have really good regrowth and, and can withstand, you know, wet wet feet basically. So, you know, they would be they would be some of the brassicas, I think. More the more the rakes as opposed to the to the sort of the turnips or the leafy turnips where the crown is, is low on the ground. If it's really wet and you start getting some pugging, I think they'll probably be impacted more. So, so yeah, the, the taller varieties of, of rake would, would probably be some of the better ones. Yeah. Yep. When you're caught those there, when you're cutting with a harvest, with the guys turned by the hour, or the acre, or by the time? With the forage, with the for the silage? Yeah. No, we typically by the ton. They don't want to come back, why? Because it's. Oh yeah, no. We well, you can adjust. You can adjust the height, yeah. But no, they. We, it's by the ton, but these guys by the hour as well. Either we've had both. It just depends. You know, we'll buy the truckload. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> oh, yeah. We're reasonable size fields, I guess. We're sixteen thousand acres out there, so we. <laughs> Oh, yeah, on on so I guess when we fence when we fence up our intensive areas, we're down to about 20 acres, and we and we split them up. But if we go and see the crop, uh, you know, we'll on on that rotation, we'll take some of those internal fences out, and uh, and and yeah. So. Right. No. 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 We do it on a we do it on a bigger scale because we we'll typically take it when it's coming out of pasture, it's going into a cropping cycle. So we're popping those fences out, or a lot of the little internal ones. We might have a laneway that runs through the middle. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah. So no, that's that's what we do there. Any more questions for either Ben or uh, Justin? Some people say brassicas looks to drink the the root system from the brassicas. Is that true? The, sorry, what's that? Brassicas, the, the root system from the brassicas, the plucked the green, if you could drink it. Oh. oh, they go to, through the drainage? Yeah, right. Well, we don't, yeah, we don't, have, a, we don't have a problem with that, but um, I know we, we have a lot of drainage in New Zealand too, and it doesn't seem to be a problem there. Um, yeah. But they, you know, they they can, they can go down, but I haven't. I, I've never seen it a problem with drainage, but I can't speak for here to be honest with you. But yeah, New Zealand, I can. Yeah. I heard that if the tiles hold water, then the roots grow in because they go towards the water. But if the tiles drains for a it's not a big issue. Yeah. Right. Okay. So if the drainage is done properly and it's draining away, then it's not a bigger bigger issue. Then. Yeah. 